For the last few weeks I am searching for a budget NAS solution for my private storage and on this journey I found this Gigabyte motherboard on eBay that on paper has all the features I need and I thought it would be a perfect fit. Welcome to Mikon's Hardware and in this video I suppose it to make detailed review of this Gigabyte MJ11 EC1 motherboard. But as you have guessed it, this is not happening. This Gigabyte MJ11 EC1 motherboard is an unofficial uh, option or unofficial derivative of the Gigabyte MJ11 EC0 motherboard that you can find on Gigabyte's web page. The main difference between these two variations is the absence or presence of the PCI Express X16 connector. The official Gigabyte motherboard has full-sized PCI Express X16 connector on the motherboard. The unofficial version has this slimline PCI Express X8 connector, which can be used to be the riser or some other cables to convert it to M.2 or PCI Express X16. For this video and for my private NAS solution I bought not one but two of these motherboards with the hope that at least one of them will be working fine. I also wanted to try the official Gigabyte BIOS on one of the motherboards to see if they are intercompatible. Unfortunately, even though I bought two motherboards, I still do not have a working motherboard. One of the motherboards are going into a reboot cycle as soon as I try to load into Windows and the other motherboard refuses to work with anything higher than 16 GB of DDR4-2133. I have tried 32 gigs, I have tried DDR4-2400 and DDR4-3000. That simply doesn't work. Immediately I have to say that this is not a problem of Gigabyte MJ11 motherboard. This is a problem of these particular samples, because when I received the motherboards I could clearly see that they've been used and abused for a very long time. There are rust stains and a lot of dust. When I tried to install memory sticks I could feel that these memory slots were not used for a very long time and I could even feel some rusty crisp inside. So these motherboards were somewhere used in a server farm or mining farm or some other farm until they went end of life. And after that someone decided to resell them on eBay. Of course I'm going to send them back to the seller, but before that I still managed to do some testing. Let's start with some positives. Even though Gigabyte MJ11 is a server or a workstation motherboard with the full ECC memory support, it still does not lock you out from a timings and memory speed. So there are BIOS menu options to overclock your memory and adjust memory timings, which is very nice of Gigabyte and very nice of AMD. It is also possible to adjust the number of active CPU cores and disable or enable SMT hyperthreading. So this is very nice. What's not very nice is that with this motherboard we have this uh, slimline X8 connector and in the BIOS I could not find any PCI Express buffication options. So even if you manage to uh, buy a connector and turn this uh, slimline X8 into an M.2 slot or PCI Express X16 slot, you can connect only one device. Ideally, I would want to split it into X4, X4 and connect two devices. Somewhere in the internet I have seen that the official Gigabyte version EC0 has PCI Express buffication options for the PCI Express X16 slot and that was the reason why I wanted to try the official Gigabyte BIOS. Still, because I have to send the motherboards back to the seller as is, I am not going to try the official BIOS, because otherwise I risk losing my refund. Another thing I was concerned about is this fan. Usually server fans are very fast and very noisy. In case of Gigabyte MJ11, the motherboard comes with a pre-installed fan that looks like a server fan, but in reality it's not that bad. During boot up the fan spins up to 100% and a bit noisy, but during normal operations it's very quiet and even under full load I could barely hear it. So I would not bother changing it if it would be for myself. 
If you have a defective fan or if you have got a noisy fan or you just want to get something even more silent, then on printables you can find adapters for 92 and 120 mm fans. Additionally, I have also designed a 3D model for IO Shield for this Gigabyte motherboard because usually when you buy motherboards from eBay, they come without IO Shield. Link for this model on printables will be available in the video description as well. Another very disappointing point is that the smartphone function works only for the CPU fan header. On the motherboard you also find two extra chassis fan headers, and they are also 4-pin headers, but the smartphone function does not work with these headers. Since one of my motherboards refused to boot into Windows and the other motherboard works only with 16 gigs DDR4-2133, I don't know how we can trust benchmark numbers, or I would much rather say we cannot trust these benchmark numbers. Nevertheless, I did a Geekbench 6 run, and when four cores with four threads are enabled, we have score of 943 points with one CPU core and uh, 2900 or almost 3000 points with all CPU cores. In comparison, Ryzen 3 1200 in Geekbench 6 on average scores 983 points and 2833 points. So the performance between this Epic 3151 is very similar to Ryzen 3 12100, even though Epic has a slightly lower clock frequency. Comparing this quad-core CPU to Core i3-10100, we see that Core i3 is significantly faster. Core i3 scores about 1427 points with one CPU core and 4214 points with all CPU cores utilized. What's weird though is that when I enable SMT or hyper-threading, I get lower score in Geekbench 6 compared to uh, SMT disabled. With SMT enabled, I have got 880 points on single CPU core and 2457 points with all CPU cores enabled. And that means that we lost about 50 points with the single core performance and about 500 points with all CPU cores enabled. I don't know how it happens so, but I can only speculate that with SMT enabled, the load on the memory system increases, but the motherboard traces have degraded and the CPU is wasting resources for correcting memory errors. ADA64 results for memory performance are also rather pathetic. I am not even going to mention the numbers, but if you're interested, put the video on pause and take a look at the screenshot. Finally, I have also verified the power consumption, but just like with the previous results, you shall not count on it because the motherboard is not fully functional. So under full load, the motherboard consumes about 55 watts of electricity, and during idling, the motherboard consumes about 30 watts of electricity. It's also important to note that Windows Task Manager shows some CPU activity even during idling. I can only speculate that the memory subsystem or the memory tracing is not working properly and the CPU is wasting resources correcting ECC errors of the memory. I really don't know how to conclude this video. It turned out to be much shorter than I expected and pretty sad. And that's all thanks to the eBay seller who decided to ship me two defective motherboards. At the same time, Gigabyte MJ11 EC1 is pretty decent. I really like the motherboard and it has all the features that I would want to see in my private, budget-friendly NAS device. If only it would work. So if in the future I somewhere find a fully functional Gigabyte MJ11 EC0 or EC1, I will not hesitate buying one for myself or for building a NAS device for sale. With this I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was somehow helpful, see you in the next video, bye bye.